okay. Turn the lights on. Oops. That's better. Zoom the camera back. So that's raw sienna I've got up there. It's a bit of a mess. And fix my little camera so you can see my face. Uh, I think that looks okay. I can't quite tell yet. Yeah. I'll turn it around a little bit so you can see the board a bit too. Okay. So what I want to do today is I'll get this. Here's my palette. I'll put some paint up here. That's my white paint. I've already got the raw sienna up there because it was being bad. It was lumpy. So uh, I'll put it up there to sort it out. And cobalt blue and crimson. And that's the basic colours for painting usually. There's a bit of crimson there. Did that camera zoom in again? I think. I'm not sure. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There. So we've got cobalt blue and crimson and white. I'll start with those colours. What other colours we need? Oh. Actually, well now we're going to need some yellow, so I'll put some, I'll put some warm yellow up there, just a bit, not too much, and we'll do a proper painting, we'll work, we'll take our time. What I want to do today too, I want to show you a few things with the brush. Some of the students have been having a bit of a problem with their brushes, and uh, I'll just check everything's done. Lights, camera rewound. Camera recording, sound recording. Hello, hello. Hope you can hear me. Um, microphone on. That's right. Put my little microphone on. Sound off the big screen. Paint, brushes, paper. Everything should be ready. Okay. Brushes. Okay. Two inch hog bristle brush. That's it there. Nothing fancy about that. Now let that camera come out again, not too far. Let's have it out to about there. My white paint's gone for a walk, but that's okay. So put plenty, plenty of paint on your brush. You see there's a lot of paint there on the brush. Plenty of paint on the brush. Look, lots and lots of it. And then you smooth it out like a cream. You don't students have been doing this picking up a little bit of paint then we go under the palette pick up a little bit of paint I want to show you this because it's wrong it's no good come in come in close and I hope that camera's in focus okay there's your paint on your palette you pick that up you don't pick up this paint here there's nothing there there's no paint there so you don't pick that up that's useless you pick it up like like this like a big hunk, like it's a smorgasbord and you want as much as you can get, so take the lot there and take it over and put it on your palette on your painting thick and you spread it out and if you happen to have it too thick then you have to come in with a knife, I did have a knife this morning um, there it is okay, if you do happen to put it on too thick come in with a knife and take it off and, and put it on again somewhere and put it back on your palette but don't go trying to paint with no paint on your brush. It's a cream. You put lots on. So that's the first thing that I want my students to realise now, today. Let's zoom out again. Whoop, I'm just learning to drive this. Okay. And crisscross, both sides of your brush. Crisscross. Now this is acrylic paint. If you paint slow, it's going to dry. You can add water. And you can add a little bit of that uh, retarder medium if you can find it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll put a lot more paint up here. And see, that was a lot of paint I used on there. And on a little tube of paint, it would have been a third of the whole tube on there. So you put plenty of paint on. First lesson, plenty of paint. 
you can smooth your sky out horizontal and then you can clean your brush at the bottom of the board because on most paintings we have water so you might as well clean your brush here but clean it horizontally there so your brush has hardly got any paint on it number two point today don't go washing your brush all the time in water or turps leave it if the brush goes hard and it's unmanageable wash it and use another brush but don't keep washing your brush all the time you're working you've got to work with the paint and if you keep washing your brush some paint will be thin some paint will be thick some paint will have oil in it some paint won't have oil in it no wash the brush when you finish your work that's all there is to it <coughs> okay where are we blue paint sky blue that's this one fallow blue crisscross 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 fallow blue dark dark now if I keep working the brush will become lighter because I'll run out of paint and that's what I want but if I put it over there I'm going to have light paint over there I don't want the light paint over there so let's unload it there a little bit clean your brush this is very methodical clean the brush you can pick up some more blue but you can continue with this blue because you've cleaned your brush and it's only going to use the paint that's there so that's enough paint in the top of the sky no it's not I'll put a little bit more here and here and spread it a bit because I prefer the sky to be like that don't have your ground like that have the sky like that it's okay there's a lot of do's and don'ts today and I've got a little bit of canvas over here I'm going to have a little fiddle with another brush in a little while to show you what's going wrong with your brushes okay crisscross crisscross use the tip of the brush and spread that out I was able to do that because there was no paint on the brush if there was paint on the brush I couldn't do that get off we'll have a nice clear sky okay clouds I'm going to show you something now and I'm an old fella so I should be careful Put some surgical gloves on if you've got them. I did have them somewhere. Good grief, where are they? I can't find them. Anyway, this is acrylic paint. It's not so toxic. But don't trust it. Paint's not toxic. And I'm only going to do this once. So, here on the palette, put a bit of crimson, a bit of blue, a little bit of raw sienna. Mix them up. And that'll make a grey. Don't mix them completely. Mix them like that. When you mix your colours, Mix them like this. Let's have a look. Like that. You see they're not completely mixed. So when you use them in your painting, you're going to get all those lovely colours like you do in nature. You can't just use one boring, dull colour. You have to have all these colours. You look in nature, you look really closely. And there's reflected light and light from the sky and light from the ground. All these different lights, it might look grey, but it's grey with all those colours in. That's why we don't use black black hasn't got all those colours and you can spot it for miles away with a bit of practice looks terrible okay I'll pick a little bit of that up on my finger and then whoop, have to zoom out again and I'm going to show you how to paint clouds with your fingers not a good idea but if you've got surgical gloves on you can have time of your life practicing this and if you've got a big wall to do you can use your whole hands okay put your grey on first whoops nearly gone there it is there's the grey. Now here's your clouds. You clean your finger, put it through there hard and just pick the paint up or come on the edge of your finger. Can you see that? Can you see that? It's on the very edge of my finger. There. Okay. And you can do this easy. You put the bit on there that hasn't got any paint on, the edge of your finger. That's not paint. And then you slowly turn your finger in and there's your clouds, see? Just paint them like that. Like signing a name. Don't fiddle with them. Leave them because we've got another job to do with them in a minute. You paint them and give them a bottom. Give them a bottom on your clouds. You can come in with a bit of a dark bottom if you want to. And I should have a little bit more blue under there. I don't like using that blue on this thing, but anyway. I'll go and wash my hands in a minute. There. So that's an easy way to paint clouds, but even though when you finish them, you need to give them a brush over. A little clean brush, there. Yeah. 
Yes, clean brush. Brush them over and make them look like they're moving. If you're right-handed, your clairs might be different than mine. It might have the su sun shining on the other side. But I always have my clouds this way, and that's all there is to it. It doesn't matter. They're always the same. Okay, brush them over. Brush them over. Brush them over. There's your nice clouds, all brushed over. I better stop painting with my finger, and if you're allergic to things, don't do it. Okay. Brush. What sort of brush we use now? Anything will do. Oh, goody, I've got a brand new one. <laughs> okay, let's put some sky in underneath that sky. A little bit of white, put it in there. They're clouds also, they're horizontal because they're a long, long way away. A little tiny bit of raw sienna will give us a glow. Oh, that raw sienna is really bad today. Ooh. I'll put it there, we're going to cover it over in a minute. That gives you a little bit of a golden glow. Raw sienna is, is rather a dull looking colour, but when you put it with white, it looks rather pretty. It comes up real real shiny sometimes you can make terrific sunsets just using the raw sienna instead of yellow and a bit of red gives a bit of red light in our sky so that's the sky all done there there's nothing much i can tell you there anymore i hope that camera's that camera's focused properly it doesn't look so good on the youtube looks good on my monitor now oh, mountains put a bit of blue there clean the brush pick up a bit of white, put next to the blue, and you can scrub your mountains in. Nice blue colours. Okay, there's a mountain. There's a mountain. Okay. It's going to be that shape. We covered my cloud over, but I didn't mean that. Now, I've done something bad here. I've put my mountain exactly halfway up there. That's cut the board in half. Not good. So this mountain is going to be a very boring background mountain with nothing happening. And then the lower mountain will be the exciting one, which is about there and it focuses, you focus lower down than the middle of the board. I don't like cutting the middle of the painting, the mountain or anything else. Mountains get darker as they come towards you. Everything gets darker as it comes towards you, so mountains especially. And that'll do with that mountain. That'll do today. Okay, now, this is for the students who don't understand this business about grey. All through this painting there's got to be grey. There's got to be grey from the background right through to the foreground. It's no good just putting a few grey mountains, stopping no grey in the foreground. No good, no good. I know people do it and it looks good, but it's not right. And if you want to progress past the pretty painting stage onto the professional stage, you're going to have to use the greys. And the greys are... Look at that palette, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? I'll continue with it. Okay, get rid of that. No white in the grey. That's why I'm getting rid of this bit of white here. I don't want it there. Yeah. Your grey is from blue grey to red grey or green grey. Now I'll put the red there, but not much of it. We'll put more red down here. Put a bit more red down here. And the raw sienna. What a mess. My paint. My paint's all gone gluggy. Okay like that. Now I'll clean my knife and when I mix this I want that blue to go right up there. Okay. There's a certain way of mixing it and it's like this. Just mix it like that. Okay and then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow down here and then coming down a little bit further. Okay. I need a little bit more blue in that yellow. Uh -huh. Now when they're mixed together, they're all greys. Okay, you've got blue grey, you've got a red grey, and you've got a green grey. Simple. Background, middle ground, foreground. All the foreground might be a red grey. If it's foliage, it's usually a green grey. If it's rocks, a green grey, I should say. If it's rocks, it's usually a reddish grey and tree trunks can be a reddish grey or whatever. You can add your colours into that grey. But here, you've got background greys, middle ground greys and foreground greys. You must use them. It's no good having foliage in the foreground with no grey in it. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So, here's your foliage brush. I won't use that because you can't buy them in some countries. So we'll use a house painting brush. That's a normal house painting brush like that. 
bit of a scruffy one, cost me about a dollar twenty. And we're going to make some foliage. So you get your house paint and brush and you load it with your colour. So this foliage is going to be middle ground foliage. There's not enough paint there, I wish I had more. So it's loaded with the, the dark colour. Then you pick up your bright colour. You can mix a bit of something in your green if you want to, but this will probably turn out rather green anyway when it mixes with the blue. So we're over onto the practice palette, practice board. I better get right over so you can see it. Actually, we'll get just for a minute or two this over. And you can come in close because I want you to have a good look at this. Okay. Whoop, come here. Stay. Now, good look. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Look how much paint's on that brush. You can't paint these scenes with a little tiny bit of paint on your brush. You need a lot of paint. Uh -huh. A lot of paint on the brush. And it has to be loaded correctly with a darker one side and the light on the other. There's no good painting foliage without that dark on there. I'm saying it like that because I have to tell people over and over and over again. Okay, you start your foliage. You do a dab. There's a dab of foliage. Okay, it looks okay. Depends on how big your tree is. Let's say the tree is about about that big. So that dab of foliage is pr pretty well in perspective for a tree about that big. But it's probably in a cluster like that. Okay. I've got a little bit too much yellow on my brush, but I'll put up with it for a minute. Then another one. Now, and another one. Okay. It's no good. I better put it where I can see it. There. It's no good. One, two, three. No good. Because there must be something behind there. You've got to have one behind there. We're going to load this again. Dark. And we've got more dark on the brush now. You've got to have dark in there. You can't just have light foliage. So you've got dark and light. Here. Dark. And see the light comes off. Mostly dark. Let's go for a, we'll go for a, uh, a green grey. Mostly dark. That green and grey is not much difference. So what am I trying to say? There's background foliage, there's foliage on the other side of the tree, and there's foliage on this side of the tree. Because when you put your branches in, they've got to go over some of that foliage. You can't have a tree that looks like a fresh flower and you've got foliage and foliage and foliage. It's got to be... That's no good because, you know, there's all your branches, okay. You've got to have something underneath and then the foliage over the top. You do have some breaks in the trees. But remember, there's, there's foliage on the other side of the tree also, not just on this side of the tree. Let's have a look. I'll turn my painting up so the right way now and see what it looks like. Okay. Don't see many of them, do you? Right. Now let's get back on the job. Zoom out. Zoom in. Zoom in. Whoa, come on. There. Okay. Foliage upside down. Foliage, foliage, foliage. That brush has run out. No good painting with the brush run out. My message is dark and light, and you have to have dark and light on the foliage. What I've been seeing is this. I've been seeing this, and it's no good. Let's have a look. I've been seeing foliage which is just light. Uh-huh. No good. Dark and light. In fact, you have to have a lot more dark than light. Okay, students. Try and remember, we'll see if there's any difference next week. Right, where am we? Right in the middle of the picture. Okay. Well, we need... We've seen I'm using this brush. Let's do some nice blue background foliage with a raw sienna. That looks rather pretty. And I'm coming to the yellow now. 
And we need some more darks along here. That'll look alright, okay. And we go back into the pale, oh, there's some blue there, that'll look pretty. Some pale blue right back here, let's have some, oh that's a bit much. Anyway, it's a rather ornamental painting so it might look alright. No, I don't like it. Okay, let's have some colour. Some darks, I'll run out of darks. Mm -hmm. And some lights. So you can do that too, you can put your dark on and then your light, which, which works out good, that's a good idea. But I think what it is, you've got to sort of know what's good and what's not good, and that takes a little bit of practice. But as soon as you see something that's good, leave it, leave it, and try and repeat it. Okay, a bit more dark. There you are. I'll put all my darks on, and that's the dark green, that one. It's gone the green grey. And I see I've got a little bit of red in my foliage now. That look, should look pretty. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Something different. Okay. More paint. I need some white paint. I know I need some white paint on there, so I might as well put it on there. And my pretty blue has disappeared. I'll put a little bit just there on the masking tape. My cobalt blue is gone, so I need to put more up on the palette. Cobalt blue always mixes with the other colours, so it can go there. Crimson's gone. Go there. We might as well introduce our pretty Indian yellow. For those people that sell paintings, where is it? This Indian yellow colour sells more paintings than anything. If you can get it in the middle of your painting in the background, it attracts the eye. People will be walking past your exhibition and they say, oh, look at that. And they're looking exactly at the Indian yellow colour. And it's marketed under all different names. Most Indian yellows are very transparent. I have come across one that wasn't transparent. It, lo it looked just like a raw sienna or it looked like a um, jade brilliant, I think it looked like. And uh, where's that painting knife? The Indian yellows are all different names, yes. Here we have Australian sienna. That's made by Matisse, Australian sienna. And there's another one in oils, it's called Australian red gold. And Indian yellow in the student quality Rowney oils is very good and I imagine Rowney have something similar in their acrylics I don't know I haven't seen it but if you haven't got it use the raw sienna and a little bit of warm yellow mixed in it but you watch this Indian yellow I actually haven't done my water yet hang on I'll put the water on water water put the water in first you need that first before you put your bank in otherwise you'll muck everything up water there, blue water, very blue. I always have the water on that side of my painting because you can see what I'm doing. If I put it over here, you can't see it. There, and we need lots of reflections. I'll put them in quickly. Something like that. They should be dark there. Make up a bit of dark paint. That raw sienna, when you put it into the purple, it turns it into a grey, otherwise it remains purple. That's not dark enough, bit of green in there. There we go, something like that. And a nice clean flat brush. Haven't got one. Here's one. Ooh, brand new. Look at that. Okay. Here where you can use a very soft brush. This is, brush is really, really soft. Usually when you're painting, you know, your soft brush turns into a mucky mess. But here, just to do that reflections, it's good. I don't know what's going to be like after I clean it. Don't know what it'll be like in the morning. Um, yeah. So that's good enough for our reflections at the moment. Is it? Yeah, it'll be right. I'll put plenty of white lines on it. So I've already loaded this knife with the Indian yellow and white. I don't know if you can see with that camera how it's loaded. You see it's loaded. Have a good look at this because the students are having a problem with this too. Now, you see 
how that brush is loaded. There's a lot of paint on there, quite a lot of paint, but it's separated. The knife was clean, the paint is separated. There. And when I put it on, let's see what happens when I put it on. I'll put it on from here. Just put it on. And you get that brilliant colour. Don't fiddle around with it. You can do that with a fan brush. You can fix it with a fan brush. There. And so. I'm still trying to drive this thing. There it goes. Goody. Stop. Woo. That's okay. We'll fix that up later. Don't fiddle around with it, whatever you do. Now, down. And there. Knife's dirty. Whenever you're working with a painting knife, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you do, every time you pick up paint, you must clean the knife. Otherwise, you only get, you can pick up paint, but when you put your paint down, you get the dirty colour that was on the knife. You don't get the colour you picked up. Okay, because the dirty colour that was on your knife is on the top of the colour you picked up. So that's what you're going to get. So it's very important to clean that knife every time. I'm painting my typical little scene of a river, which is easily, I can do it with my eyes shut, I think. Pick up a bit of dark, put it under the bank in the background. This is very rough. There. And spread what Indian yellow I've got left out up here. You can see why this colour sells so much. You put it with the crimson, it looks beautiful. That sells paintings because people are attracted to the beautiful golden colour. It's a colour of golden wheat. And the thing you must not do, I keep saying, is keep touching it, leave it. If you touch it any more than about three times, it's gone. It's lost its gloss. It's lost the lot. Always in your paintings come into the, the reds in the foreground. You could come into warm red there if you wanted to. That's crimson. And then you must go into your dark. So I'll pick up some of these colours. It'll turn into a dark. You have it dark there because you don't want people looking there. You want people looking into the middle. Before I go much further, there's something important you want to do on most paintings, and that is put that white bit there. That again attracts the eye, just that little bit of white there. Now with a fan brush, come in close again and we'll have a look at how to touch up this back without destroying it. Clean fan brush. Talk about fan brushes. There's two fan brushes on the market now. There's probably thousands of them, but there's two types. There's a very soft one, and there's a normal old one that's been selling for the last 50 years. Don't buy the soft one. It turns into a gluggy mess, and you cannot get your paint to go up into grass. I don't know what the soft one's for. It's probably for watercolour painting or another style of painting. But for oil or acrylic painting, look for the firmer, the firmer, type fan brush, not the soft one. Okay, touch, touch, touch. That's enough, no more. A little bit more, because we're closer. And I can do a dab of white just here, just to get the eye into that area. Don't put your dabs of white over here. We don't want to be looking over there. We want to be looking in this area near the middle of the picture. Touch, touch. Ah, uh, now you see how my camera follows me so well. The camera doesn't move. Oh, I did it. I did it. I put the white there. I notice there's a bit of canvas there with nothing on it. I'm not paying attention. But I can cut the painting down there. We can shorten our painting. I'll fix up that mess. Dab, 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 dab. There. That'll look okay later. Then I'll cut the edge off the painting. I don't like that. 
There's something to fix it with. Oh dear. Okay. We'll get that right later. Across the other side. And again, lightly touch the grass. And here, th this bit here, leave it. Don't fiddle around with that because that's a butte bit. See that white bit there? Leave it. I'll zoom out in a minute. You can see what I mean. There. And there. Okay. Across here. Up. And always have, put, I put it on the masking tape. Have some nice dark grass. Ooh, that, too much, too much. Don't go too silly. Uh, dark grass coming up into the water. Here, you must remember too, you have to have light and dark. You can't just have light. So the blue represents the dark and the light. There. And here, 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 here. The same. Let's have a look what I got. That'll look a lot better when I rip the masking tape off. Look a bit more like that. See, looks like that doesn't look so good. Look like that with the masking tape off. You see that white there? That's good. Just bring it up so you can see it through the grass. Now with my brand new mini mini five cent brush, I'll paint it. I'll use blue and white. It doesn't really matter what colour these are. As long as they're not overdone. Don't overdo them. Just a few little branches. Just to represent branches. There. And here. They're blue. They look pretty. This is an ornamental painting by the way. It's, it's not the correct colours. I take a lot longer to do one in correct colours. And clean the knife very well. People having trouble also with light white lines on their water. Take your white, put it there, like that. Cleaning the knife again. Put the knife there and move it once. Okay. The knife's got a little edge on it. I don't know if you can see that. Little edge on it. And you touch that there. Yes, it looks good. So I can go on the painting. So that was one. And I'm likely to get three or four on the painting. Let's do the background one. That was such a good one. There's one. And one there. One there. I'll better get another one. Load it. Touch it. And one there. That's all there is to it. There's no need to do this unless you've got a big painting. And that'll do. I don't think I need any more. Let me touch there. That's a little bit too much, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter today. Well, I can't see anything wrong with that, except it's got no feature. We need a tree or something here. Yes. So let's have a lesson on how to load the painting knife to paint these tree trunks. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to paint a tree trunk. Paper in one hand, knife in the other hand. Mix your colours. You need a dark colour for the left side of the tree trunk here because the tree trunk's over on the left and you keep your darks on the outside of the painting. It doesn't matter which way the sun's shining. We're painting an ornament and we want people to look at it. And if the sun's shining on the wrong side of the tree, it doesn't matter. In fact, this time it's, yeah, it is shining on the wrong side of the tree as far as the clouds are concerned. Pick up a dark colour. That dark is purple. I prefer it was a grey. Oh, what we're going to do here now, too, we'll introduce bright red. And bright red will bring, it'll bring the browns into our colours. There, let's have a bit of bright red. It'll bring the browns in. See, the other colour was crimson. It wasn't bright red. No white. There's a little bit of white in that, but I don't want so that turns into a brown purple. 
and up the front of the tree we want some pretty colours. We won't have, I think, raw sienna. Raw sienna and the bright red will give us a, pr a few pretty colours. There you go, there's a heap of pretty colours down there for the bright side of the tree. Clean the knife. Now, we load the knife dark on one side because that's the dark side of the branch. Everything is from light to dark. That's the dark side of the trunk. And the other side of the knife with the light colour. There's a lot of light on there so I'll add a little bit more dark. Now, there's a lot of paint on that knife. A lot of paint. See if you can see in this camera here just how much paint is on that knife. There's a lot there. You see? Now, we'll come in a bit closer. And now, students are having a problem with this, amongst other little things. I'll show you where the corner of the board is. The corner of the board's there. So I don't want to be in the corner of the board. But what I want to show you is you touch the corner of the blade on first, the very tip of the blade. You touch that on first. And then you bring it down. I'll stop now so you can see what's going on. You bring it down. Now there's too much light on mine, so I'm going to tilt it towards the dark. And you bring it down like that. I'm pushing quite hard on there because I've got I've got that edge of the knife pushed hard on there. And bring it down, just like spreading cheese or butter or something. Now, what a mess. Okay, so from there, there's no need to try and fix up what you've got. You fix up the bits that you haven't got. Stop. Stop, stop. You, you. Uh, yep, goody. So on this tree, there's bits missing here, bits missing there. There's no need to fix any of that. It's all done. So when you go back to repair your your tree, you can use those bits missing, and that's where you put your darks, and that's the bark on the tree. See, that's the bark, and this bit. I think you better have another close look. But because it's so dark, one line there. So you can see it. Okay, that's our tree trunk. It's very thick to paint because my acrylic paint's all gone to jelly for no reason. Round, soft brush. Oh, somebody talking to me, I'm sorry. Howdy, sir. Hey, mate. Easy painting. Thank you, sir. You guys are from India, aren't you? Because you always say hello, sir. That's very nice. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Hen. Melody. Hello, Melly. <laughs> Beautiful. Very good. Thank you. Uh, you guys are going to let me know how this is going later because this is all an experiment. But I think it's all right. Little round brush. People try to use it with two fingers and they fall to pieces. They can't do it. But if you shut your eyes and try with it, it works. The reason you can't do it is because you can't try to control the shape of the branches. Don't try and control the shape of the branches. You want a branch from here to there. You paint a branch from here to there. You can do it with your eyes shut. Look, look not looking. There. There's a branch. Because you hold it with two fingers. Let the brush do the work. Okay. Now, the thing about the branches is not just the branch, it's also part of the picture. So the branch, when you look at a painting, your eye goes boom around a painting like this. If the branch is all painting out, your eye goes up there and someone might have a bright painting up there and they start looking at that, they forget about your painting and off they walk. You want to keep them on the painting. If you want to sell your paintings, they've got to keep looking at it and they're going to look at it that long, they fall in love with it and they're going to take it home. So the trick is, you put this branch in like this. So when their eye goes up there, it's caught here and it comes back into the painting. So on all paintings, make it so the attraction is into the picture. You don't have to do it too much. That's going to cover my lovely cloud. So this might end up a dead tree, that's all right. Now that goes up in there. 
You see how it goes out of the picture and takes your eye out of the picture. Well, we've got to stop that. So we're going to have to have up, cross, down and over and down like that. So it wants you to look that way all the time. There, there. We might put a little bit of foliage there, but very little. Now, these gum trees, like deciduous trees, leave their, lose their leaves every year. Gum trees lose their bark. At a certain time of the year, just before Christmas in the area I live, the bark all peels off and lays around the bottom of the tree and it catches in all these things and hangs down. Not too much, just a bit. And that's it. It hangs down like that. Now, this bright red is going to bring this forward. You see how that brings the tree forward? That's bright red. Okay. Let's have a little bit of foliage on the tree. Now, this is where I was mumbling on earlier about brand new brushes. Oh, they're very good. Um, mumbling on about two colours in your foliage. Let's load the two colours. I don't know what I've got here. It's Oh, because we're so far forward we can go into a, 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 a uh, warm red. I've got to get that there. I don't want to put any more paint up here so we're going to have... Yes, I'm going to have to. Yep. That's gone into a brownie. I'd rather have a blue ready grey rather than a real red. There. That'll do for a background colour. Clean the other side of the brush so there's nothing on that side. All the paint's on this side. All the dark paint is on one side of the brush and then all the yellow paint is on the other side of the brush. Not so much yellow. I don't want a lot of foliage on this tree because I like my cloud. It's a goodie. Okay, so just a little bit. A bit of foliage there. There. Some foliage on the other side of this tree here. And a bit coming down into there. See it brings the eye in. So that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And but see this bit here? That's a bit of an attraction. And once you look at that, you're not going to look back at the painting. So let's get rid of it. Let's just get rid of the lot of it. There. Now that tree has sparse foliage here and thick foliage here. So I want to make it look sparse here by putting that on and then with my little fine brush, if I can find it yet, we'll put a couple of things here. Mmm! Good grief. Hello. Yeah, I'm making a movie. I'll see you later. I'm, I'm painting at home. Bye bye. Sorry. Um. Now. There. There. Um, one down there. Okay. All I've got to do now to make it look pretty is touch up, oh any brush will do, touch up this green here with a little bit of green just to balance everything. Maybe a bit of green there. And I do need a few branches when I come to look at it. I want to make it a little bit more interesting here. Just touch the brush on. Let the brush stick there. Touch it down. It's like painting with a stick. Okay. And a couple of birds. Oh, my brush has gone stiff. That'll do. I'll sign it now. And once I take the masking tape off, we can see exactly what we got here. Oh, good masking tape, this. 
I'm going to have to buy some more of that. They are all finished. I think it looks okay. Have a good look. I'll get you close up to it so you can have a good look at it. Now with a camera, that looks very dark there. It's not quite that dark, but it's okay. Maybe it's a bit of a shady day and the sun's shining here and the sun's shining on the water. So that's okay. I wouldn't usually have these, this foliage so lean here, but I like my cloud and I want to leave it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. I need to turn the cameras off now and I'll see you again. Let me know how it goes. Say hello when you get a chance. Thank you. Bye. Rover. Hi. Yo. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Rover. This is very cool. Thanks, mate. Len Hand, uh, Holstein, also called Len. Holstein, yeah, you lost me there mate. Bright red, warm red, correct. Bright red is warm red, yeah. Um, cool red is crimson, yes. Yeah, that, that's an easy way to think about it. Warm yellow is yellow that has red in it. So you've got your warm yellow is uh, like an orange and cool yellow is like a lemon so that's an easy way to think about it too your blues are warm and cool cobalt blue these blues are rather cool blues you have a good look at ultramarine blue put it beside the other blues you'll find it has a lot of red in it uh-huh now on my youtube this looks rather out of focus but on my monitor which is right beside me it's in focus so if you find it's out of focus on YouTube, let me know, thanks. Thanks, Melody. Elliot, thanks, mate. I hope the sound was all right. I've got a fan going here, which might make a bit of noise. And behind me, there's a big refrigerator, which... Yeah, I should have left the door open, matey. Okay, see you guys.